Diamonds are associated with an incredibly interesting and unique type of volcanic eruption that few people are aware exists. And the magma itself is sourced from a depth far deeper than magma that's utilised by any other form of volcanic eruption. They're also very rare and they don't necessarily always carry diamonds up from deep within the earth when they erupt. On top of this, exploration for the formations related to these types of eruptions is notoriously difficult. The reason? Well, the only thing left over when these events occur is something known as a volcanic pipe. And these pipes, when mined, produce some incredibly deep open cuts. In this video, we're going to take a look at the diamond releasing kimberlite pipes and do a deep dive into this incredibly unique and somewhat rare form of volcanic eruption. The rock known as kimberlite was named after the Kimberley region in South Africa, a place that is notorious for carrying world-class rough diamonds within its soils. In 1905, the largest diamond that the world has ever seen was mined in South Africa. The Cullinan diamond was a massive gem quality rough diamond that was cut into different gems of various sizes. So kimberlite pipes are a type of volcanic eruption and they literally break all the known rules in volcanology. As previously mentioned, these types of diamond forming eruptions are quite rare and they have the ability to be extremely explosive, but yet they aren't fueled by a high silica magma. Instead, it's the opposite. They are fueled by magma that contains barely any silica. And this magma travels an unbelievable distance to finally reach the surface where it then erupts forth with little to no warning. On top of this, it doesn't form a magma chamber before it erupts. It literally just shoots up at a ridiculous 250 kilometers an hour like a rocket originating from the Earth's interior, allowing it to reach the surface in two to three hours, depending on how deep it is originating from. And it's the only type of volcanic eruption that has the ability to pass through a region of the lower lithosphere called the Diamond Stability Field, which is an area of extreme pressure, where carbon that has been subducted from past ancient subduction events can encounter enough pressure to turn them into diamonds. And because of this, it's the only volcanic eruption that has the ability to pass through this field during its ascent, where it sometimes carries these diamonds with it to the surface. The diamonds that were mined in South Africa came from an ancient kimberlite pipe that erupted 1.18 billion years ago. The magma that carried these diamonds is thought to have come from the Mantle Transition Zone, which exists at a depth of between 410 to 660 kilometers within our Earth. Most volcanoes derive magma from the lower part of the Earth's crust down to the upper portion of the mantle. Kimberlite, on the other hand, originates far deeper than that, and as a result of this, the chemistry of it is completely different to what we normally see in explosive eruptions. So when these eruptions do occur, like anything else, the magma that was released solidifies. And then, these rocks begin to erode. And as they do, they shed diamonds. Which slowly, over time, travel towards any nearby creeks or rivers. And this is how alluvial diamonds are found and mined in present day. After the eruption, the land itself will be a depression. Kinda like a very tiny caldera, making it very hard to find a source of these eruptions. In general, it's thought about 6,400 of these pipes exist. but only 900 of those actually carry diamonds, and of those, only 30 are actually profitable enough to mine. So the diamond fields located at Kimberley in South Africa were found in weathered kimberlite, and it was referred to by the miners as yellow ground, because of the yellow colour that it had in its weathered state. When these shallow deposits were finally exhausted, the miners began to dig deeper, finding less weathered and altered rock. And this rock had a blue colour to it, and was thus referred to as blue ground. Blue ground kinda sucked though, you had to run the material through a rock crusher to extract the diamonds. Whereas yellow ground was so weathered that it was easy to break it apart and extract the valuable diamonds within. So kimberlites are a type of ultramafic rock. These aren't ridiculous sized supervolcanic eruptions. They are small, 
but very explosive. So if you were near one when it happened, you'd know it. But kimberlite eruptions can be effusive or explosive. It just depends on a number of factors as it ascends. After these events, the solidified kimberlite pipes that were utilized as a conduit for the magma to ascend show just how deep these pipes can go when they're mined. And carrot-shaped mines that are chasing these volcanic pipes could theoretically follow it down for about 300 kilometers if it was physically possible. So this is kimberlite, a very strange and unique type of volcanic pipe that carries a strange type of magma and has a bafflingly different style of erupting. It's mind-blowing to think that these events can transpire in as little as a few hours and how even though these eruptions were short, they were far more powerful than many volcanic eruptions that have occurred in recent history. Thanks for watching.